Hey everybody, DJ here, and welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is going to be the third part of rendering jewelry and cycles. We're going to be talking about preparing your final render, doing some compositing, coloring, all that kind of stuff. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. We also have an awesome Discord server. You can see the link below in the video description. So if you have any questions, you could jump on there. And I also have a Patreon, if you would like to help cover the cost of making these videos, that would be very much appreciated. If you haven't looked at part one and part two yet, you might want to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be a little bit lost. So let's go ahead and continue where we left off last time. Okay, so now we're ready to render this out. And what we're going to do here is we're not really going to use the denoise. I know that a lot of people like the denoise, but to me, denoising really kind of screws up some of the dispersion effects. So let's go to sampling. I'm just going to change this to 512, okay? Go down here to adaptive sampling and turn that on. 0 0.0005 maybe, which will help a little bit with the background and the speed of rendering that. Really quick before we go ahead and render that, let's actually, I'm going to tell you how you can do this for the CPU and the GPU render. Go to edit, preferences, go over to your system. I have an RTX 3090, which has ray tracing cores, so optics will be enabled. You can use the CPU as well, so you can click that on. Just make sure that your tiles are smaller, probably 64 by 64 in your tiles. The new, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, I do have a new uh, video that's on um, rendering with the new Cycles X, which does not uh, use tile-based rendering anymore, which is very interesting. But if you um, are using this version, the 2.93, you'll want to make sure that these two are checked on if you want it, or go to CUDA and make sure that these are checked on if you do not have optics or if you find that CUDA works faster. Just make sure that if you're using the CPU and the GPU, that the tiles are smaller, like 32 by 32 or 64 by 64. For me, I'm going to go back over to optics. I'm going to uncheck this one, and then I'm going to close this out, save, and then we're going to render this image out again. So here's what the image looks like right here. After it was done rendering, you can see that with the GI uh, global illumination, there's really not that much noise that's all in here. It really does look pretty good. And then when it is scaled down to 50% about that size, most of that stuff should be fairly cleaned up. Now there is one thing that I'd like to do here. Um, if we look down at the bottom, and I just want to point this out to you, this is caused by the um, that effect that we did where we took the, I'll just uh, open it up just so you can see it. So that's pretty much caused by this that we did here, the linear light with this here and sort of like the math we did. Now you're more than welcome to not use this. You can just disconnect this here and I'll just show you what it looks like when we do this uh, step. If we look closely here and you take this, uh, instead of piping it into here, you just take your image map and you put that into your bump take this out of the normal, you can then control this with like a 0.1 or a 0.05 or something like that to make it a little bit easier on the eyes if that's what you prefer. And I might end up going with this in the end, I'm not sure. I really do like the way that, whoops, let's bring that back up here. I really do like the way that this looks right in here. It's a, it just a little bit of this scratchy sort of effect here. It might be a little bit too strong, but I do like the way that that looks. And when it's reduced down to this big, it might not be that big of an issue anyway, but that might bother you because it's not quite 100% accurate. You can see there, it's not even there, that little black bit there. Let's actually take, take this distance and put it at a one here, not 13, a one. And let's take the strength here and let's make this maybe a 0 0.025. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks okay. So let's kind of go with that method there. And then the other thing is these shadows here. Um, a lot of the way that these are rendered, usually there is a light that's more cast like this. So that it's a longer shadow or even in this direction like that. So that's usually what I've seen in uh, photography. You can make this larger too to soften that. So you can see that I put that over there. We can even... Uh, let's look at this from the side. We can even duplicate this and put one over the top like we did before so the brights are a little bit more shiny. The other thing I want to point out here that um, we want to kind of take a look at, and this has to do with just the uh, way that we're doing our render with the fast GI approximation. 
let's take this and just to help you guys out who don't have a 3090 like I do, um, which it makes total sense. Nobody really needs that unless you're doing very, very high end professional work. And even then it's probably not necessary. We're going to click this where it says crop to render region right here and click on your camera. And let's go and take these and move them to this section right here. Okay, we just want to look at one of these diamonds, all right? So like this, and then let's go ahead and look at this in the rendered view. And if we take a very close look at that, you can see that there's this sort of dark sort of area here. And what that means is that there's really not enough bounces for the uh, illumination to really handle the number of passes that this needs to look really nice and brilliant okay so let's go back to our settings here in the render properties and we're going to go down in the light paths we're going to go down to the gi approximation and let's just bump this up a few times and you can see that as you turn that up higher and higher and higher that area is less and less visible there's more bounces that happen going around in there and maybe you put it up to 18 or something like that but you can see how much more noise is happening, but it's going to make for a more brilliant looking diamond. So this is really up to you and how much time you can spend doing this. You can bump this up or turn this down. It's really up to you. I'm going to change this to 16. And I think if I set this to zero, it will render the viewport. Let's see here. Uh, nope. Let's just, let's just better safe than sorry. So let's just put this up to 16. Okay. We're going to save here, go to solid mode take these and pull these back out and then go back to these here this um, the output properties unselect or deselect the crop to render region and let's take another look at this and here we have it now one, one thing to sort of like think about is that when you are uh, looking at this one thing that you might want to do is just shift your camera around a little bit and rotate around to get the best Look to this because based on the, your angle to the object and everything else it might change how it looks in the final So let's change this to view lock camera to view and I'm just going to move this with the render on and I want to get a little bit more of an angle like this on it right like that I'm going to save and then hit F12 and we're gonna see this again in the render. So there's another test render there and if we take a look at this we can kind of like observe and see what we're uh, you know kind of critique this a little bit so it looks pretty good. Um, the bump texture looks a little bit strong we could probably pull that down maybe um, you know 20% 50% something like that but it's looking really nice and we're still a little bit high key here it's still a, bit, a little bit bright down in here um, but overall, it's looking really nice. So let's do one more quick pass, and we're going to just turn this back onto the rendered mode, go to the, down here to color management, change this to false color, and take another look at this. So we can take this one here, and let's just double check. So it looks like it's the top one here. So let's just take this down to maybe 200, and change this back to our filmic whoops looks like I still have this on and we want to also take that roughness down a little bit I think I also want to make this a little bit more um, a little bit more satiny so let's take this one and we're gonna bump up the roughness just a little bit and take this one here and bump that up a little bit as well and let's take this and change it to like maybe a 0 0.01. Save that. Render again. Okay, so there we go. We have a final. And, you know, we could go back and forth and do some adjustments with this all day. But I'm going to say this is good for now. So let's jump into the compositor. So we're not going to do too much. Go into compositing here. Click on this button here that says use nodes. We're going to zoom out a bit. I'm going to move this over here because I know what's going to happen next. If I hit control shift left click, we can bring up a viewer right here. It looks like it populated over here this time. And you go over to view, click on this little button here that says fit and now it's in the background. And basically we're going to do a couple adjustments here. And to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to split the screen here or split my panel. Let's actually make this smaller so that 
you know what? We're actually going to do something I usually don't do, which is exciting for you, I'm sure. And let's just pull these a little bit closer in over here on the left. And I'm actually going to turn off the backdrop so it's easier for you to see. And over here, I'm actually going to change this to the image editor. Now, you don't have to do this. So I'm going to change this to the viewer node. You don't have to do this. This is just for me to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so this is our render, and we're looking through this node here, not the composite. It's very important that you understand that. We're looking through the viewer node. So if I hit Shift A here, I'm going to add a color balance node right here. I'm going to take a moment here and make a recommendation for you. If you're finding that as you're doing this, it's very uh, choppy, very slow, the updating is incredibly slow, all that kind of stuff, basically, you're going to be limited by your CPU and GPU. And even with my RTX 3090 and my really high powered CPU and everything, sometimes doing stuff like this does take a while. And if you want to do a color pass and a contrast and like all this sort of stuff without having such a sort of like choppy performance on your computer, my recommendation would be to reduce this render to maybe half the actual size. So, you know, when you go in there to your render properties and you changed it to 150 or 200 percent, reduce that down to like 50 percent. Do a quick sort of like color pass on it, add the glare node, really kind of take a look at it a bit, and then do your final render so that it's bigger and you can do your final pass that way. And that way you'll be able to do a lot of the major adjustments and get the overall look that you're looking for a lot quicker so that you're not waiting for the update to kind of like chug along. And then when uh, you're ready to do your final, you just re-render it out, make sure that you're piping everything in correctly with your color nodes and everything and the glare node that's going to be coming up. And that way you're basically what doing what's called working in proxy, which is working in a lower quality version than your actual final. But um, you are also uh, making it a lot quicker and easier for yourself so that you're not taking so much time like waiting it for a render, just a little tiny adjustment. And what this does is there's a lift, gamma, and gain. So you want to take this right here, which is the correction for the shadows, and we want to kind of create some contrast here. And how we do that is this middle one here, the gamma, see it says correction for midtones. We want to pull this down a little bit. This is usually where you want to start. You want to pull this down a little bit, pull this up a little bit, we're basically toning our image here by doing that. And the best way to sort of see what we're actually doing here, if I move this over here by middle clicking and moving that to the, the left there, go here to scopes. I'm not going to do too much explanation of how this works. But if you take this middle one here that says waveform, this is basically the color profile of our image here. And ideally, what we want is some sort of way of having most of the stuff in the middle but taking up a range from top to bottom. And if you look over here at the very, very top, if we kind of bring this out a bit, at the very top, you probably can't see it, but there's some points that are way up there. And that means that those are blown out highlights. And that's okay because there's not too many of them. Ideally, you won't have that many. You might have way too many, which means you might have to check your uh, lighting again, but this is okay. But you see all this mass in the middle here is up towards the top. And that means it's more of like a high key lighting, which means that it's more in the upper area, the brighter area of our waveform here. So basically the point here is to adjust these three gray values and get a nice range without having too many bright brights or crushed blacks at the top and the bottom. So this feels kind of okay to me. I'm looking at this and the waveform and I've sort of increased the range here and increased a little bit of the uh, just overall amount of contrast in the image and if we control shift left click on the image itself and then we click on the actual color balance that we did you can see that we've added some contrast there. Now the next thing that we'll want to do is we can actually neutralize or color our film and you can basically take the lift, the gamma, and the gain and hold shift and you can actually color your image by taking these three color wheels and just holding shift, left click dragging, and if you want it to be more neutral, white or blue sort of thing, you can pull it over to the blue area, or if you feel like it's too cool or too blue, 
you can pull it over towards the yellow and the red, which will warm it up. And you'll see that in this, I am going back and forth between the color balance node where I have neutralized some of the colors and going to the original image. So you can check out how that looks as I'm sort of comparing them. The other thing that we're gonna to wanna to do, like we always do with stuff like this, is we wanna add a glare. So filter, we're gonna go down to glare. And for this one, we're actually gonna keep this on the simple star because it works pretty well for this. Take the image, pipe it right down into here, and we're gonna look through this node. You can see it's a little bit crazy right now, but if we zoom in, you can see that there's some really cool stuff going on here. So basically this section, I'm just going over the iterations, the mix values, changing it between low and high to make the sort of pre-render faster. So the threshold basically will control which areas are being isolated. The iterations will increase the amount of times that the star effect is being applied. And the mix value, basically a one is the glow map, a zero is a mix between, and a negative value will pull out that glow from being applied to the original image. So you'll wanna play with all those values and see which works for you. So basically what you could do is you can go back in and change the placement of those uh, lights to sort of reduce that. And just to show you how good this can look if you uh, sort of follow it a little bit differently, I know I'm going through some of the stuff differently than this one here, but you can see I changed some of the location of the lights and everything else, and you can see that um, based on how you set up your lights, how you set up your HDRI, all that kind of stuff, you can see what a cool effect you can have there when you finally do your render. And just to show you, this is the composite. I also used a despeckle, but that's not really important here. Um, you can take this, put it right into there. And if we pull this over, you can see that basically that little star glow effect can have some really cool results provided that you make sure that your lighting is all set up properly and you take the time to really perfect your image before you render this out for final. So let's go ahead and take this one here and I'm gonna show you how to rent, like basically save out the file. So from here, when I'm looking through the viewer node, so if I hit N over here, make sure that you are setting this to you can see here it says viewer, or if you want to make this the render result here, just make sure that you take the final output and put that into the composite, just like that. And either the render result or the viewer node, depending on which one of these nodes you're using for your output, just go to image, save as, take the compression down to zero, save as a PNG, name it and save it out. So we're gonna call this cycles ring one. And there you go. So hopefully you've been able to follow this along and create a really cool looking render. Again, if you haven't, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously. And if you would like to just have this file to download, become a patron and get to the tier where you get project downloads and stuff like that. And I can send you the file so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time on DJ Tutorials.